So, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my Raspberry Pi OS desktop running on my Pi 4. So, I'm going to be showing you guys what themes I use for it and a lot about what software I enjoy using and I have pre-installed on here. So, to start out, let's just take a look. So, this is my desktop. I have the, I've taken the bar, put it on the bottom, I've changed the theme some, and I've done some customizations like that. So if we click on here, we have our normal thing like this, and to show you guys what theme I've done, I can go over here to theme and appearance settings, and for the widget theme, I've gone with arc dark, because in my opinion, it looks pretty cool. Color, I've left that as it is. Icon theme, I went with papyrus dark. In my opinion, it, it's actually a pretty cool looking icon theme, and yeah, I enjoy it. For mouse cursor, I went with Breeze, and Breeze is what is used in KDE, so if you're a regular KDE user, you're probably familiar with this um, cursor, and I enjoy it, that's why I did it. Window border, arc dark, font, I haven't changed the font, other, I just left it. So yeah, that's basically the theming that I'm using in this desktop, and I've actually been using this Raspberry Pi OS desktop like this for the last week, and I found it to be really reliable. It's super quick, super snappy. I can run a lot of software that I want to run on my desktop, and I can do like all the work I want to do from it. So it's become really reliable, and in my opinion, it's really good. Yeah, so now to go over to the software part. So as you see, we just have our terminal. Like I've customized the terminal to make it blue instead of the normal black and just change it up some and then we do have our file manager here and I have I've installed tons of software and those all add software to the home directory that's why it looks like I have so many softwares um, so many folders but that's just why yeah and then we have our web browser this is actually just normal chromium with this new icon theme that's why it looks like that and yeah, I mean, it's super good. I can literally do all of my work from here with no problem. I can do all my Google searching and all that. So this isn't all about that, so let's go over. And I do want to mention, I'm running this from a USB stick, so I do get better speeds like that. But I am not overclocked at all. I'm just running at clock speeds, and this is a Pi 4 8GB model. So to start out, we can go over to here to programming and these two things come pre-installed and I have installed VS Code or Visual Studio Code to do my coding and my different projects like that. Yeah, so you can actually get this from Pi Apps or you can get this from the official Visual Stu Studio Code website. Both of those work. You just install the dev file and you have it up and running and you can type all your code, do all of that stuff all on your Raspberry Pi OS and it works great. And yeah, I found it to be reliable and really good. And then next in place, we have internet. So Chromium web browser, of course, comes pre-installed. And then right here, I have Chromium Widevine. And if you ask what this is, this is like an updated version of Chromium Media Edition that is in Pi Apps too. And this allows you to run Widevine websites like Disney Plus, Netflix, Hulu, Spotify, all of those apps that when you try to launch them in Chromium, they give errors saying you need to do you need to enable Widevine and stuff. Well, using this browser, you don't have any of those problems, so I can watch all my favorite streaming things from here. So that's pretty good. I'm not going to go into that right now. And then what else do we have? We have Discord. So as you probably know, I have a Discord server and I use Discord a lot. And this Discord app actually works really well. It's still a web app, but it's based on Electron, but it performs surprisingly well. So as you see, I can just scroll down here, go to a server, open stuff up, and it's all really nice and quick. I mean, and I can type my messages, do everything I want to do from here. And I can close this in I'm still discord is actually still running so it still shows that I'm on, online so you don't have to have that thing open on the bottom and bother you and when you really want to go totally offline you just go right here you can go toggle to open it back up and when you're to when you're totally done with this 
all you have to do is just click right here and go quit discord and then you're totally done with discord and it does not show that you're online anymore to go back to internet so we have discord and then we have zoom and zoom this is with um box 86 again and yeah i mean it performs surprisingly well i made a video about this before and this is x86 linux zoom emulating by box 86 and runs on the raspberry pi and look at this it's the normal zoom thing you can join a meeting you can sign in you can do that you can join all your meetings from here with no problem and it works surprisingly well like this is great yeah, so that's another thing I've a actually used to join some of my meetings. And I can just close that. And it does this little pop-up thing, so it's going to pop up once more, but it's fine. And then, for sound and video, VLC, of course, comes pre-installed. That's nothing special. Graphics, we have Image Viewer, and then we have Flameshot. I did install Flameshot. So if you're wondering what this is, this is software where you can take a screenshot. So you just click on this, and I can just do however much I want to do. I can go like that. And then you, there's all these different things on here. You can draw on it. You can do that and open with. And like I can open it with Image Viewer. And then here's the picture that I just took. It, it blends in with the background, but you can tell that this is a screenshot. So it's pretty, it's a nice software to have if you want to take screenshots regularly. And then I can just quit on that too. And then games. So I have installed a few games on here and they work surprisingly well. I can play all these awesome games from here like Super Mario 64. And this is the Mario. Super Mario, Mario 64 Mario. PC port. Let me just turn the volume down some. And yeah. I can make it full screen too if I want, but I'm not going to go into that gameplay right now. And then for if we're looking at other games, I've installed Minecraft Launcher, so you can play Minecraft Java. I do have Quake on here, if you wanted to see how Quake runs. Quake is super good on here. It's like amazing speeds and stuff. This is Quake 1. I could have installed another Quake, but I just installed this one for now. So, yeah, I'm not really going into the installation processes in this video. I'm more going over what I have on my desktop and what you can do. So, can I pass it? There we go. Through that portal. Let's see what's back here. Oh, not there. So let's just go back here and see what we can do. I mean, yeah, so you see, you can even play older games on your desktop with no problem. Like, this is <laughs> totally playable. Yeah, so that's enough of Quake. Let's just quit out of here. And if we wanted to look at other games, I do have Duke Nukem 3D on here. Revolt on then Steam. So you might have saw this on my, on my desktop too and you're wondering what. So I've installed Box86 on my system which you might know from Twister OS and Box86 is software we, which you can emulate Linux x86 app. So to show you that it's installed, I could type Box86 in here and all these things come up. So Steam is actually running through Box86. So you can only play a very limited amount of games, but, I mean, it's working. So you might see it launch in a minute. I don't have any games on here yet because I don't actually own any games that work on the Raspberry Pi as of now. So that's kind of a bummer. But I still want to install it for maybe in the future. If I ever, get, if I ever do get an app, I'll be able to play it. I mean, so here's a Steam login, I could log in, and if I had any games, I could try to play them, but I don't right now. I'm just going to go ahead and X out of there. Yeah, so that's about it for the games. 
I'm probably going to be getting some more games later from PyKiss, PyApps, all of those awesome things. System tools. So, you might know of this EDX UI, which is this awesome looking terminal, and it fills up your whole screen. So, I installed this. These are two different versions, and it's just a super fun terminal to use. However, it is a bit slow on the Raspberry Pi 4, so that is kind of a bummer, but it works great on compu PCs, computers, Linux computers. It's so fun to use because it just looks so amazing. That's why I'm a huge fan of it. So even though I'm not really going to use it that much, I still did go ahead and install it. I didn't mean to do that. And then I have Gparted, which you might know is a partition editor. Which is very useful to format drives, create partitions, do all of that kind of stuff on your other drives or on your own system drive. So it's very useful. And then we also have here, we have PyKiss, which I've done a lot of reviews on. And it's just this awesome app where you can install tons of software. I really like the game selection. There's tons of awesome games, tweaks, emulation. I could install RetroPine here too, but I'm not too into the emulation stuff. It's not my very, my thing really, but I do do it sometimes. So, yeah, there's a great selection of apps in here. It's just amazing selection of apps where you can where you might know not know how to install it like some apps in here i didn't even know were compatible with the raspberry pi 4 but i opened up PyKiss and bam they were there and i didn't know that so that was very encouraging for me so and then we can go over to accessories a lot of things a lot of these things come pre-installed like archive manager archiver etcher i did install myself so etcher i used to flash new operating systems to different drives and stuff and as you see this is the updated version it has it even has clone drive flash from url and flash from file so yeah it works really well on here and then we have imager which is the normal raspberry pi imager and we have a lot of operating systems in here they have actually been adding a lot of stuff and they released a new version version 1.5 so it categorizes stuff like this with emulation, media player, other specific purpose OS's. And yeah, it looks pretty cool. Like we have Ubuntu Risk OS. And you can just click on those and you can flash it straight to a different USB drive that is ins inserted in your Pi. So it's a really useful tool to have. We have PDF Viewer. So Pi Apps is another amazing app store that I use as much as I do PyKiss. And there's tons of apps in here. And it's so easy to install. Like, if I wanted to install this TBO player, I don't really know what that is, but I just click on it, and I could go details first, and I could read about it. So it's a Python-powered GUI for YouTube functionality. Oh, so it looks like you can play YouTube or something. So if I wanted to install this, all I got to do is click install, and it opens up a terminal, and it just downloads the files, installs it on my system, makes desktop launchers, and bam, you have the app installed. So it's just a super nice looking, working, functioning app to install software on your Raspberry Pi 4, which I'm a huge fan of. So when it's done installing, you can see that it just opens this thing up and you can close the terminal. And it even made a nice desktop launcher for me. I could launch it and do different stuff. So that's basically how Pi Apps works. And it's a super nice thing. Accessories. And then I've also installed Pi Power Tools, which is by the same creator of Pi Apps. And there's just some useful things in there. I won't go over that right now. Visual Studio Code, you already know. So and then you see right here Wine. So I installed Wine with Box86. So this is the same version that is on Twister OS. And I actually didn't know this, but once you install it, this little wine thing comes up in your menu right here, and you can launch all of your wine programs from this launcher. So it's actually super easy. I install 7-Zip. I can just click on 7-Zip, and it's going to start emulating the Windows version, and it's going to launch it for me. Look at here. This is Windows 7-Zip running on our Raspberry Pi 4. And you can actually install lots of other games with this that do perform well, I haven't installed any yet, but I might be doing that in the future. Yeah, so 
it wasn't that hard to install but there are some things you need to know about doing that and then these are just the other software on here and yeah I mean this looks in my opinion is really cool and then if you might look right here and see this Netflix and Spotify so what this is this is a Netflix web app and I actually got this from a user named Phoenix bird in the Pi Labs discord he actually has compiled a lot of web apps for the Raspberry Pi 4 that work great and it looks like an app but it's just running through the web app actually I could go down and if I wanted to launch something I can just click on it and it should launch for me with no problem but to do this you need to have the chromium widevine installed and look at here we have Netflix playing right through our desktop and I have a nice desktop launcher right here and it's just super nice you see yeah so now let's go over to the Spotify part so again it's still the web version but I mean it's as good as a normal thing in my opinion it works super well you just launch it and here we are we have Spotify and if I was to play anything I could just click this play button and it should start playing through my Bluetooth speaker right here so I think you guys can hear that but if you can't it is playing you see and I could just minimize this I could do my work and have that working in it it's super nice I love it it's so great so that's enough of Spotify but it's just great web apps to have to be able to launch from right from your desktop with no problem at all and yeah so then I've just downloaded this nice looking background picture from the internet and I've customized it as much as I want and yeah so this is my Raspberry Pi OS desktop so let me know down below what you think of this and if you're interested in seeing a follow-up video of this and of me showing how to install all this software like box 86 and wine with it if you don't know how to do that and then just installing some other software like this and theming it please let me know down below in the comments if you'd be interested in a follow-up video of that because if you are I'll definitely get get to work and make one of those so I hope this video was helpful for you guys and interesting and if it was please hit that like button and don't forget